welcome to lecture 9 of uh, thin film deposition module. Uh, we are uh, in this lecture we will continue our discussion on uh, a, f uh, a physical vapor deposition process called sputtering. Okay. Remember in the previous lecture, lecture 8 we had discussed how uh, these energetic ions which we have created as part of our plasma interact with the surface of the cathode. Okay. And this cathode is our target material which we want to deposit as a thin film on a substrate. Okay. So, uh, let us look at the what are the various parameters that govern the deposition rate or the uh, deposition of thin film. Okay. So, uh, before we start let me give you a simplistic uh, geometry of what we are doing, a schematic. So, we have a vacuum chamber okay, in which we want to carry out the thin film deposition process by sputtering. And for sputtering, we also have a cathode and an anode to create the plasma. Okay. So, these are cathode and anode okay, and between which we apply a voltage V. Okay. And remember cathode is also our target, the material that we want to deposit on the substrate. Substrate is either capped at the, at the anode or at any other place in between the, the, uh, inside the plasma. Okay. So, this is cathode, this is anode and we will have plasma in between different regions of plasma, uh, cathode dark space, uh, uh, cathode glow, cathode dark space and negative glow. So, these are the essential parts of the plasma which are considered. If you have this distance very large, then you can also have a positive column. Okay. Now, in this geometry, the, the ions, the positive ions are being accelerated towards uh, my target or cathode and resulting the sputtering process from the target. Okay. And then these uh, sputtered atoms which are coming out from the surface of the target will, uh, will have some kinetic energy, will travel some distance and then make a thin film layer at the, uh, at the substrate. Okay. So, this is the overall process of, uh, of sputtering. Okay. Now, before we go here, let me give you a very simplistic uh, uh, equation for growth rate or deposition rate in case of sputtering. Okay. This can be described as if the deposition rate I say g dot in centimeter per second. Okay. Uh, though the uh, deposition rates would be very, very slow of the order of nanometers per minute. Okay. So, uh, of course, you can convert these units. Okay. So, this will depend on this is the power density of the plasma x t h. This is uh, we will discuss this term divided by g. g is the gap between cathode and anode uh, rho which is the density of the material that you are depositing on your uh, as, as thin film. This is the density of thin film not the target. Okay. Target might have a different density than your thin film okay. and uh, how dense you want to deposit uh, the thin film will uh, depend on various parameters. Deposition rate, um, substrate temperature, and various other factors. Okay. So, this is the density of the thin film 1 plus gamma E. Gamma E is the again secondary electron emission coefficient okay, because we need secondary electrons uh, to sustain the plasma because electrons in a DC plasma glow are always accelerated towards anode and are being lost there. Okay. So, we need to generate these secondary electrons to keep a continuous supply of electrons which will ionize the gas atoms and uh, and create gas ions and which will result in uh, 
resulting the the sputtering process okay and e is the uh, average energy of sputtering okay or uh, sputtering ions okay so this expression is uh, uh, is not a uh, uh, it is uh, implied expression from um, various experiments okay now we understand this is the uh, power density of plasma in watts per centimeter square okay this xth is a uh, term this is called thermalization distance okay now as we had said that once the uh, uh, sputtered atoms come out from the target they have some energy okay typically uh, between 2 to 10 electron volts some kinetic energy and this kinetic energy is, uh, is uh, given to them by the energetic ions. Now how far these uh, uh, atoms travel uh, before they become thermalized. The, a process of thermalization means that uh, this excess energy that these ions have, uh, these atoms have, they will lose this in the process of collisions. Okay, because as they start moving towards uh, away from the target and towards the substrate, they will uh, collide with various uh, uh, various ions or gas atoms. Okay, so let's fix our gas also. Let's we have argon gas. So they will interact with these, and during this collision process, they will lose their energy. Okay, once they lose their energy, they are not uh, traveling there uh, towards uh, anode. Okay, because once they start from the cathode, they have a preferential direction uh, because of the uh, change in momentum process. But once they uh, undergo these collisions, they become they lose their energy. They start moving as any other uh, gas atom, okay, uh, and they uh, they become thermalized. Okay, so all these parameters. So it is obvious that if you have higher power, uh, power density of plasma then you will have higher growth rate it's very easily understood because if power density of plasma is higher more ions are present to um, bombard on the target okay resulting in more uh, more sputtering if this distance thermalization distance is higher then more of the atoms which are being sputtered will reach the substrate and result in thin film deposition rather than being lost to the uh, walls of the uh, of the chamber or any other direction okay so if this uh, this uh, parameter is large then you will get uh, more deposition rate okay if this distance between uh, uh, cathode or target and substrate is large then uh, of course your growth rate will go down because it will act against this uh, uh, thermalization distance if this uh, secondary emission coefficient is uh, very large then your growth rate will go down okay and also uh, if uh, this energy of the ions the sputtering energy is very large then also your uh, deposition rate will go down okay now let's shift our focus to the graph on the left hand side uh, this graph is uh, uh, um, on uh, on x axis we have argon pressure okay for the same energy of the ions okay energy of the ions is kept same and pressure is uh, varied and we can uh, measure the current this is the cathode current okay this is cathode current due to ions Okay. And on the uh, right hand side we, uh, we can record the sputtering yield and uh, relative deposition rate. Okay. So we have two curves here curve A and curve B you can see that uh, discharge current increases with increase in pressure. Okay. You have higher pressure that means you are creating more and more uh, argon ions which will uh, so that more and more uh, argon uh, argon ions are reaching the cathode resulting in more current okay so and it uh, increases with the argon pressure however 
the sputtering yield will start to go down. Why is that? Because if ions, there is large number of ions, the, um, the energy of the ions which are reaching uh, the target will, uh, will be less because of uh, various uh, interactions with the, uh, between the atoms and the ions uh, and collisions. So, the energy though these ions are reaching the, the target and the uh, current is increasing, their energy uh, will be less. So, they will uh, result in less sputtering. Okay? If they result in less sputtering, then we uh, will have less deposition. Okay. So, combination of these two curves is this uh, curve right here, which uh, gives you a relative uh, deposition rate. And from this, you can find out that there is a, uh, a sweet spot or sweet region where you have the highest deposition rates possible. And uh, these are somewhere around 100 millitor of the pressure. Okay. So, that is why um, you need to have 100 millitor uh, pressure. If you have too high, then your uh, deposition rate will go down. If you have too low, uh, low pressure, your deposition rate will go down. Okay. So, uh, this is the geometry for a parallel plate DC glow. Okay. How can we improve on this? Because these rates are very slow and the, at these pressures, we do not want to operate at these pressures because uh, if you remember from the partial curve, if the pressure and distance is uh, PD, uh, product of P and D is very large, then you need to have higher breakdown voltage. Okay? So, we want to lower uh, our operating voltages and one way to do that is to lower this uh, pressure and, uh, but if we lower the pressure, our deposition rates go down. So, how do we overcome this? Okay? Uh, we can use AC plasma for sputtering process. Okay, how does this help? Uh, remember, we had discussed uh, the AC effects in the plasma and the plasma frequency and the oscillation of electrons. Okay? So, uh, one of the benefits is that you can uh, utilize AC plasma to generate dense plasmas at low pressures. Okay? And at low pressures, because there is less collision between ions, the sputtering rate would be higher because the ions reaching the, the target or cathode would have higher energy. Okay? Also, AC plasma confines electrons in oscillating field. Okay? So, uh, simultaneously both electrodes are acting as anode and cathode. So, electrons are oscillating between these two plates. So, they are not being lost at any of the electrodes. Okay? You can adjust the frequency such that they will not be able to reach any of the electrode and they will just keep oscillating in between. And in the process, ionize more and more gas ions. Okay? So, once you are not losing any electrons at the electrodes, then you do not need to depend on the secondary electron generation or secondary electron emission. Okay? So, uh, that helps in uh, creating more and more uh, ions at a lower voltage. Okay? But the AC frequency should be high enough so that the ions are not able to move. Okay, ions should always be moving towards target. They should not be oscillating. Okay, so if the frequency is higher, okay, then these ions will not feel the effect of that frequency because ions are heavier. Okay, they take some time uh, of inertia and other things to realize that there is a change in polarity, and by the time they realize the polarity is changed again, so they can keep moving in one direction. Okay. In which direction we will discuss this because in AC plasma there is no fixed uh, anode or cathode. Okay? But uh, the AC frequency should be high enough so that ions are not able to move. Typical AC frequencies are in megahertz range okay, for this effect and specifically this 13.56 megahertz radio frequency, these are called radio frequency or RF. Okay, and we are uh, this we call it RF plasma is reserved for plasma processing equipment. Many uh, uh, process material processing depends on this RF plasma, be it uh, um, sputtering process, uh, reactive ion etching, or PECVD, which we'll uh, discuss later. So all these 
are basically on this 13.56 megahertz okay okay now in case of ac plasma the electrode acts as plate parallel plate capacitor okay the only current required is to use in charging and discharging of electrodes now uh, see this effect suppose you have these electrodes okay and with a dc voltage and fixed cathodes okay then what would happen that suppose you want to deposit an insulating material like sio2 okay it's not conducting so you will have a target which is of silicon oxide okay now suppose this uh, target thickness is uh, uh, of the order of uh, 1 mm or uh, 1 to 5 mm okay typical thickness because you are to deposit this material onto the substrate not more than few microns few hundred nanometers at a time so typical target thicknesses are 1 to 5 mm okay so this is the thickness okay now if this is sio2 which has resistivity of the order of 10 to power 16 ohm centimeter then the voltage drop here within the target would be very large and suppose we need around 1 milli ampere current right ions positive ions which are moving here should result in some current and of the uh, the current density of the order of 1 milli amp per centimeter square okay so this is for an insulating target where the resistivity is very high so if you calculate that v the potential drop across this voltage to sustain this current density with this resistivity can be given as this resistivity j into this thickness okay and this comes out to be uh, order of 10 to power 12 volts or so for this insulating substrate uh, target now sustaining this kind of uh, voltages are very difficult you cannot uh, practically use this so for insulating targets or uh, the other things the similar thing happens at the at the anode when the there's film is being deposited of sio2 this becomes insulating okay so there is no way to flow the current between these two plates okay so how do we overcome this uh, problem using ac plasma it's because ac plasma the plasma everything here behaves as dielectric okay there is no current flow between electrodes the only current that flows is because of charging of this plates in the external circuit because once this plate becomes from negative to positive the uh, current flows uh, if we have an ac plasma in both directions to reverse the polarity that's the only current that is flowing there is no current flowing between the electrodes so there is no need uh, for this uh, this high current right so and uh, in this case we can uh, we just want this ions to be accelerated right so in this case we can use insulating targets or substrates okay so that is one additional benefit of using ac plasma that we can use insulating targets to deposit insulating films okay okay now remember uh, again in in an ac plasma there is a no fixed anode or cathode right B because they they keep changing with high frequency okay so where do we put, uh, put our target remember we had said when we we were discussing dc plasma that our cathode is where we put our target right we put our target at the cathode and the positively charged ions are accelerated towards cathode they um, bombard on our target and then result in uh, sputtered atoms okay but uh, but in the absence of uh, an uh, uh, absence of defined uh, cathode or anode where do we keep our target as it happens that when we put any electrode in an ac plasma there is a negative self bias right we had discussed this also that any plasma uh, any electrode uh, 
if we insert in plasma it becomes negatively charged okay the similar effect is utilized here to have a self bias on one electrode which is uh, slightly negative okay now let us see this in a configuration so we have we use a capacitor at one electrode okay so we use a uh, we have we are using a capacitor at one electrode okay so uh, using this capacitor of some value uh, we can define that there is no current flow from this electrode okay because of this uh, capacitor is an insulating it only allows the charge okay no current flow from this okay however the current flow can happen to this plate okay now once we do that this electrode let me take another color is self negative biased okay and this becomes the target okay because it is self biased negatively because of uh, uh, the effect we will uh, discuss here uh, and so uh, the, um, in an ac plasma this target becomes negatively biased and we can use the um, the ions which are moving towards this target and uh, resulting in sputtering also recall here we have discussed that ac frequency should be high enough so that ions are not able to move or able to oscillate okay so they are not oscillating with the field they are moving with this uh, in one direction with this self negative bias towards target re resulting in sputtering okay so our sputtering process is still going on okay now let's uh, um, discuss uh, this effect in these two uh, graphs okay since we have put a capacitor on one electrode uh, this the current flow in outside circuit will look like a uh, diode okay because the current will flow when uh, uh, this uh, while this electrode is being charged okay there is no uh, uh, current flow from this electrode okay so and the diode characteristic is like this which is shown this is the iv characteristics of a diode okay like a pn junction diode okay this is the forward bias this is the reverse bias okay now on this electrode if you see that uh, during the uh, positive cycle okay uh, on this electrode there will be large number of electrons which will be bombarding on it okay and in the negative cycle there will be less number of ion because ions cannot move that fast uh, Uh, electrons can move very fast because of their lighter mass but ions are heavier they will not be able to move that fast so we'll have a uh, large electron current on this electrode and less ion current which is positive current less okay and this is my rf signal which is applied this is the uh, positive cycle which results in this electron current this is the negative cycle which results in ion current okay now if you see that more electrons are bombarding on that electrode over certain time it will develop a negative bias such that when it becomes a slightly negative bias if you see and on top of which i am applying my rf rf signal then both currents become equal okay so net currents become zero so no more change in the potential of this electrode okay when this becomes slightly negative okay and this negative potential of the target is sufficient for to uh, accelerate ions towards it to result in sputtering okay so this is how an ac plasma works uh, for thin film deposition okay there is also an effect of electrode size size effect okay now if we recall we have a voltage which is rf voltage okay 
and uh, there is a voltage which is um, ground voltage okay so uh, the relation between uh, these two voltage so this is the self bias voltage and this is the rf potential rf signal okay this is the ac potential the ratio between them will depend on their capacitances inverse of capacitance because we know that q is equal to c into v so charge being equal because charge has to be neutralized positive charge on one plate should be equal to negative charge on the other plate okay so uh, in an ideal dielectric so uh, my uh, v becomes 1 over c okay so uh, th uh, the voltage is distribution uh, would be in accordance to their uh, capacitance okay and this capacitance ratio we can define as ag into this is uh, uh, ag by d so this is uh, for rf sheet thickness divided by uh, this is this is the rf electrode and this is the ground electrode okay rf into ds okay and this is the ground okay so we have small sheath distances at both ends at rf electrode and the ground electrode okay so uh, if i uh, so this is my rf electrode and this is my ground electrode okay so uh, with respect to this ground i am applying positive or negative potential to this rf electrode okay so if uh, this is the ratio then and also we know that current uh, according to child langmuir equation depends on this equation uh, this this is according to child langmuir equation and this is the space charge limited current okay we had discussed this part when we, we were discussing plasma so we, combining these expressions we can say that vrf over vg will depend on ag over arf taking these two distances um, almost equal okay to the power 4 okay so if we have higher ground area okay then we'll have vrf much higher than vg so all the potential drop would be at the rf electrode okay so this way we can make sure that not only the electrode but the entire chamber is grounded with respect to the rf electrode okay so we can make the entire chamber as the ground electrode and have just one electrode on which we have we are applying our rf potential this way because this ag is uh, very high our vrf would be much higher okay so um, with this we'll stop in this part and in the next lecture we'll continue our discussion on, on the sputtering uh, deposition and we'll discuss various uh, uh, large area deposition techniques also in this sputtering thank you